Hey everyone, uh, it is Michael Thorne of, uh, hey Dave, first one in, Jen, Ryan, how are you? Mr. Passanelli, legally obligated to uh, say that. Chris from Costa Rica is, uh, has joined us. Uh, thanks so much. You're, it's, it, you're cooking or it, things are cooking? Is that uh, an actual thing, uh, Dave? I appreciate that. Um, so Dave, my uh, amazing co-host of Mobile Agent TV. Hey Jesse, how are you? Um, personal, see that it's already in there. Uh, hey David, uh, uh, Dave and I return Friday, this Friday, uh, which is I believe the uh, May 29th at 10 o'clock Pacific, 1 o'clock Eastern. We're going to be talking actually about a topic that came about through Periscope. Uh, suggested by 29 degrees. Beautiful. Uh, oh, oh, sarcasm. Is that Fahrenheit or Celsius? Uh, actually, uh, suggested by Chris in this group, uh, right there, uh, from Costa Rica about how to build an amazing, uh, referral network. Um, so we've got a couple of great guests on, uh, uh, this Friday, but, uh, want to let everyone know that Periscope for Android is out. So if you know someone that's been waiting for, uh, the, uh, Android version of Periscope that, uh, that's on its way as well as you can swipe right and share this with your followers. If you've got real estate followers, you can share this broadcast out. If you're on Android, I think you swipe up and go ahead and, and, and share it. If you're not following mobile agent TV, uh, you can definitely uh, go ahead and uh, swipe and, uh, and follow. Um, I'm actually broadcasting this on the iPad. I think that's going to work a little bit better when I see your guys' comments right in, opposed to having to lean forward and, uh, and read. Yes, yes, the new shirt, the Remax Play shirt is out. Uh, thanks, David. Um, so I um, want to talk about the changing habits of our consumers, our buyers and our sellers. I read two amazing articles uh, the last couple days on, on Inman News um, that really, really speaks to uh, how things continue to change. Uh, thanks for the hearts, guys. Um, so uh, a stat that, that, that I've meant, uh, uh, stated quite often is that a survey out of the state says that eight hours a day of an adult's free time uh, is spent looking at a screen. Uh, whether that's uh, a, a phone, a tablet, a computer, or, or, or a television screen, eight hours per day of an adult's free time. And so we're in the marketing business. As real estate uh, professionals, we're in the marketing business. Not only do we market the homes that we sell, but we have to market our services. So we must, we must have the attention of the consumer before we can market. So we have to be aware not only where the shift has taken place, where they are, which is online, but how the culture shift has effect, uh, affected how we're going to go about and market. So two great articles. One uh, was written by Gregory Kipe, um, and uh, it, was, it was titled 10 Predictions of Where Real Estate Marketing Will Be in 2020, which isn't that far away. You know, we're, we're, we're fast approaching 2016. So, um, and, and three of them I want to touch on. Number three was neighborhood level knowledge will become uh, increasingly important. Uh, it's something that uh, Dave and I have talked about quite often. We see a lot of great agents uh, really leveraging local knowledge and uh, community information. Uh, number seven, agents will see social marketing uh, make a bigger impact. Uh, and, and when we get to the end of this, it'll kind of wrap around to that of why social is going to continue to play a larger role in real estate marketing. And number nine, Gregory suggested that Zillow and Trillia will not be the consumer's first choice for listing information. And, and this sort of all of them sort of surprised me a little bit. We don't have uh, Zillow and Trulia and, and, and Realtor.com in, in, in Canada. But the reasoning was that the information that those portals share is the same information you can share. But what they can't share is that local knowledge, you know, that information about the communities. They don't have that. So the consumer is going to continue to look, <laughs> yeah, David, continue to look for that information. And so if you're able to pro provide the information about the property, plus the schools, the parks, the neighborhoods, the upcoming neighborhoods, the neighborhoods that might be aging out, that's information that they won't be able to provide. And that's going to become increasingly more and more popular uh, and important for the consumer. Um, also, uh, the, the second article was Mary Borth, uh, and uh, she wrote, clarify your value proposition instead of panicking about disruption. Okay, so that sort of talks about um, this, the, this particular scope. Um, and uh, she says in the article, yes, things have changed fast with no sign of slowing down. 
right? So this, 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 this whole culture shift that we're living through, it's only going to get faster and faster. Um, it seems uh, to me that we have a one of three options. Number one, we can continue to freak out about every new system, product, and innovation, which I see so many agents do. Number two, we can ignore the buzz and continue with business as usual, which I see a lot of agents do, which I think is equally as dangerous as number one. Or we can be informed about industry developments, think critically uh, about how they affect, uh, affect us, and adapt. And that really is a catalyst of this scope, how our society has changed and therefore how the way we market to a potential consumer has changed. So let's talk about adaptation. Not only where the consumer is has changed, but how we have to speak to them and how they want to be engaged um, has changed. You see, we can't show up when the consumer is ready to buy anymore like traditional real estate marketing. We have to show up when they're ready to learn. Now that doesn't say that we can't hold open houses anymore or we shouldn't advertise listings, but the reasoning behind that marketing has definitely changed. If you think you're going to build no like and trust when they're actually ready to buy, someone has already done that. Jesse Peters in, in, in Winnipeg has already done that. Uh, Dave Falkworth out in New Jersey has already done that, already built the relationship with a consumer when they're ready to buy. So that's too late. now. Do you still have to hold open houses? Do you still have to market property? Do you still have to put a for sale sign in the front yard? Yes, you do because the consumer still needs their home sold. But how you go about marketing and building no like and trust has absolutely fundamentally changed. Okay, we're living in the zero moment of truth era. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Jesse. Uh, we're living in the mo zero moment of truth. And if you don't know what ZMOT is, the Google, I really suggest you go out and read the book, Zero Moment of Truth. But here it is in the nutshell. Prior to this hyper-connected world that we're living in, this periscope world that we're living in, there used to be three stages to the purchasing cycle. Number one, there was stimulus, which was you want to have a bag of cookies. Number two was the first moment of truth. You found yourself in the, hall, in the, in the aisleway at the grocery store looking at the cookies on the rack. And you picked, it, you, you picked out a particular bag of cookie for a reason. The packaging, uh, 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 commercial that you saw, whatever it is, you picked out a bag of cookies and you took those cookies home and then you ate those cookies and you had your second moment of truth. You either had a good experience that you wanted to replicate in the future or you had a bad experience that you don't want to replicate again. That was the purchasing cycle. But what Google has found out through the zero moment of truth is that there is a step before the first moment of truth called the zero moment of truth. And we all know what this is. This is the point where you've decided to purchase cookies or whatever it is and you jump online. You read a couple of blog posts, you might crowdsource your friends on Facebook, you might watch a couple of YouTube videos and that will fundamentally impact your buying behavior. So I wanna ask you guys a question. I want you to respond by putting out some hearts. If you have purchased something in the last year that costs more than $250 that you researched online the day before, the week before, and when you got into the store, the only thing you needed the salesperson, salesperson to do was to get it down off the shelf for you, I want you to put out some hearts, right? If the only thing you needed to do was to, to get the person to put it down, exactly. And we're talking about a $250 blender or a new iPhone or a computer. And we're talking about real estate. Now, there's a book that I suggest you all read, and I know a number of you already have, and it's called Game Changers. Now, this is a, a, a book that uh, Real Trends put out uh, last year. Uh, and uh, it's a very amazing book about our industry and how things have changed and how things have ultimately stayed the same. Um, the actual sales process, actually still putting them in the car, Dave Falkware quote, uh, I think it's trademarked by now. Um, that's the same, but how uh, it's written by Real Trends. Real Trends, uh, uh, Jesse. Uh, it's a fantastic read. It's a fantastic read. Um, those things haven't changed, but building the know, like, and trust at the zero moment of truth is something that didn't exist in our business six years ago. It has fundamentally changed the way we do things. You couldn't get on, read a couple of blog posts, watch a YouTube video uh, a couple years ago that would inform your decisions and your buying habits. And in Game Changers, they put out a, uh, they, they included uh, the information from a survey from Harris Interactive that found out the three things a buyer in 2014 wanted most, the three things they wanted most from a real estate agent. Number one was ability to negotiate. That hasn't changed. 
That won't change. That's your value. One of your values is your ability to negotiate, but your ability to negotiate comes right at the very end of the process. After the open houses, after the showings, after all that, right at the very end of the process. The second thing that a buyer wanted was a, um, education on the process. What's it like to buy my first home? What's it like to buy my investment home? What's it like to buy a recreational property, General Bryan? See, this information is zero moment of truth. Way before they're actually ready to buy, this is when they're trying to find out what they want to do. Before the open house, before they drop, I can make you an offer you can't refuse, yeah. <laughs> uh, before, before the open house, before they're ready to see your, 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 your for sale sign in front of your house. This, this relationship that people are building with, with a consumer is far, far uh, earlier. So when you remember what Gregory Peck, or what Gregory Peck, Gregory Kipe said was that neighborhood knowledge will become increasingly important. And then he also cited that neighborhood knowledge might be the thing that will make Zillow Trillion and Realtor.com not the first stop for a buyer, right? Number three, the third most important thing that a consumer or buyer was looking for from a real estate agent in 2014 um, from a, a, a survey for Harris Interactive in the amazing book Real uh, uh, Game Changers by uh, Real Trends was community information. Once again, this is zero moment of truth stuff, stuff that Zillow, Truly, or Realtor.com or traditional real estate marketing, open houses for sale signs, door knocking can't provide. And, and, and this is what are the schools like? You know, what are the parks like? What's a sense of community? Uh, what's commute times like? Uh, what, you know, what's walking at night like? Is it safe? All these sort of things, this is what the consumer wants. And this was originally not our value proposition. Our value proposition was we have the data and you don't. So you can't afford to just bury your head and continue working the same way it always has been because your value proposition doesn't exist anymore. That's being taken from you. You're not the gatekeeper of the data anymore. And you also can't panic about every single thing that changes because it'll take your eye off the ball, you know, uh, because the, because this business is about building know, like, and trust fundamentally. So let's go back to why social will increasingly become a bigger component. It's because the zero moment of truth stuff doesn't translate on a bus bench ad in a newspaper ad. All those things come and go. No like and trust, zero moment of truth means you have to show up when someone's ready to learn. So that's a blog post, that's online. That's a video, that's online. All this stuff, the traditional marketing of real estate, we might still have to do because we owe it to our consumer to get their home sold. But if we're looking to have a steady flow of great buyer and great uh, seller leads, we have to consume or we have to market to the consumer at the zero moment of truth. I know for certain that in my neighborhood, there are hundreds of people that have already chosen me to be their realtor that I don't know, that have no intention of moving in the next two to five years, you know, or in, in, in the next five years. But what I do know is when they sit down at dinner one night and say, it's time to move. Let's call Michael. That decision has already been made because I have provided them zero moment of truth information year after year after year after year. I am an expert in my community and I've built no like and trust. Now, can, how do I quantify that? I don't know that it's happening, but I know the results and the impact that it has on our business. So, Go and read, if you're going in and, and, and read those two articles, I think they're just absolutely fast, fascinating. 10 predictions of where real estate marketing will be in 2020 and clarify your value proposition instead of panicking and disrupting. If you guys uh, see some value in my, uh, my little tirades, uh, throw out some hearts, uh, share it afterwards with some other people. I really do appreciate you guys coming on and uh, watching uh, this Periscope. Once again, Dave and I return from, uh, from Mobile Agent TV this Friday, 10 o'clock Pacific, 1 o'clock Eastern. We have taken a bit of hiatus off the last month or so. I'll explain the reasons why that has happened, but we've got some great guests lined up for you uh, over the uh, remainder of the spring and through uh, summer. Uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you have a fantastic Tuesday, and we will talk to you soon.